Hello, Boots. Hello, Grimsack. Back again. <laughs> Elizabeth, you've lost weight. Hello, Jessup. Oh, hello, Mr. Grimsdyke. Back again? Once again. <laughs> Beginning a term wouldn't seem the same without you, sir. Ah, thank you, Jessup. What's the prescription? Same as before? Yes, sir. The dean's just coming along now. Ah, well, I suppose I'd better make an appearance just for form's sake. Oh, I think you'd better. At least I can read the paper. Excuse me. Hmm? I'm a new medical student. Are you not? Well, I'm a very old doctor. <laughs> I was wondering where I should go. Take my advice. Straight into another profession. How much? Fifteen shillings on the clock, sir. Fifteen shillings? What, from Waterloo Station? No, the Windmill Theatre. Huh. Clock's a bit fast, isn't it? Fifteen bob, mate. Huh. Hey, Taffy! Back in a dick. Hey, where are you going? Ah. Taffy, lend me a pound. A pound? So where would I get a pound from? Anyway, you owe me 32 bob from last time. Oh, you'll get it back. I'm on a new system, a bookie I met. Uh, I know. Well, I still haven't got a pound. Mm -hmm. By the way, how did you get on the anatomy exam? Failed. Uh, me too. Those examiners aren't fair, man. Never asked me a question, I knew. Back where we started. Never mind, man. Plenty of football. Go! Hello, Mr. Benskin. Mr. Evans. Hello, Jessup. Hello, Jessup. You are a row. Oh, had a nice holiday? Ah, uh, terrible. Shocking run of losers. Any letters while I've been away? Only bills, sir. Oh, throw them away, my dear fellow. Jessup, you fixed me up with a head and neck this term. And I want a brain. Oh, I don't know whether I can do your brain, sir. Brains is very hard to come by these days. Times aren't what they were, you know. So you both failed your exam, eh? Yeah, starting again with new boys and girls. <laughs> oh, well, you'll get through this time in a bit of luck. What time is the dean talking? Five o'clock, and you better get up to the lecture room. I'm just going to ring. Oh, Jessup, I left the taxi ticking over at the gate. Pay him off, there's a good fella. Excuse me. Uh... Sit down here, please. Name? Hmm? Uh, Sparrow, S Simon Sparrow. Have you been here before? No. Have you a doctor's letter? No, do I need one? Please. You're making it very difficult for us. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. I was just sort have of. Have you to find... or have you not been here before? No. Very well. Go in there and take your clothes off. Oh, now, wait a minute, please. Really, some of you patients are the limit. I'm just trying to explain What's your the matter, message? nurse? Oh, Sister Virtue, it's his patient. He won't take his clothes off. Oh, won't he? We'll soon see about that. I've been trying to explain for the last half hour. I'm a new medical student. <laughs> Hello, Grim. How are you? Make me football? Hello, Tony. How's the love life? Oh, easy come, easy go. <laughs> oh, excuse me. I wonder if you could tell me where the students go, please. Well, certainly not in here. <laughs> where are you looking for? Well, actually, I'm new, and I just wonder if you could perhaps tell me where I ought to go. Oh, you want the medical school. That's right over the other side. Yes. I wonder if you could possibly tell me how to get there. Go down there past physiotherapy, turn right by neuropathology, and then left by gastroenterology, and then right again by electroencephalography till you come to the main hall. Then, oh, no, it, that's not the quickest way. Go down there by DXR and EEG, then straight on past ECG till you get to the almoner's office. Oh, no, it's... Well, you're going in the right direction anyway. Thank you. Very much. <laughs> you took the stitches out too soon, didn't you? Funny. Let me help you. It is customary for me, as dean of this hospital, to welcome new students at the beginning of each year. But thanks to the commendable vigilance of the examiners in protecting the British public against the medical ministrations of incompetent idiots, I see that I am welcoming many familiar faces as well. Medical students, gentlemen, were described by the novelist Charles Dickens as a parcel of lazy, idle fellows that are always smoking and drinking and lounging. That is unfortunately still true. And the time has come, gentlemen, for a change. Mr. Evans, I suggest you devote to your studies some fraction of the energy you expend weekly on the football field. And Mr. Benskin, 
I would ask you in future kindly to remember that the nursing staff is here for the comfort of the patients, not for the students. <laughs> Furthermore, ladies and gentlemen, you will be expected to arrive at every lecture and class punctually. Last term, it was a disgrace. Students seemed to think they could come in at any time that suited them. Uh, good afternoon. Won't you be seated? <clears throat> May I continue? Oh, yes. Thank you. Your course here will be for a minimum of five years. Those of you who are able at the end of that time to satisfy the examiners you have sufficient knowledge and skill will receive your degrees and be entitled to call yourself doctor. It will require the greatest hard work, application and serious mindedness from all of you. Your first two years will be devoted to the study of biochemistry, physiology, anatomy and pathology. Three minutes shorter than usual. Did he leave out the bit about female patients and professional etiquette? Uh, no, I think he said something about it. <laughs> he must have speeded up his delivery. You had it all before, then? Only three times. Three times? You must be very senior. Not a bit. I haven't passed an exam yet. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. I... <laughs> you needn't be. I always fail on purpose. Shall we go and see the Padre? Uh, is that what you usually do? That's what I do. Come on, I'll take you. All right. Hello, Padre. Hello, Mr. Grimsdyke. Nice to see you again. Ah, it's nice to see you. How are you? Fine, thank you. Good, good. I'd like you to meet... Uh, what's your name, old boy? Uh, Sparrow, Simon, Simon ah, Sparrow. Ah, Mr. Simon Sparrow, pardon Glad to meet you, sir. Uh, New? Yes. I expect we'll be seeing a lot of you in the next five or six years. What will it be, gentlemen? Two pints, please. Beer all right? Mm -hmm. uh, oh, no, Guinness. Please. I'll make one a Guinness, Padre. He's been here for years. Nobody knows his name. I expect he's got one. We call him the Padre. <laughs> Why? Uh, should we tell him? Yes. Well, in the hospital, the patients might get a bit upset if the doctor said he was going to pop across to the pub for a quick one. On the other hand, if he says he's going to chapel for half an hour, <laughs> they're quite impressed. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Grim's Taco. Hello, Hello, Tony. Grim. Been home yet? No, not yet. I see, old man. Did you see that smashing Indian girl? In the hello, room? hello, hello. Are we going to be knee-deep in boiled rice this term? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I beg your pardon. <clears throat> Simon Sparrow, Tony Benskin. Hi. How, How do you do? Tuffy Evans. How do you do? How do you do? Do you play rugby? Mm? Well, yes, a little. What's your position? Wait three quarters. Ah, any good? Well, I was in the school team. I don't really well, know. Well, that's wonderful, man. Just the sort of fellow we need in the medical profession. Well, I always work, do I? Shan't have time for rugby. No time for rugby. <laughs> Don't be blasphemous, man. Ah, no, rugby, rugby. Here you are, gentlemen. Uh, five shillings, please. Well, Mrs. Rivington Lomax. Here you Five shillings. Oh, terrible. <clears throat> Cheers, fellow. Yes, indeed. Cheers. Got yourself some rooms yet? Mm, no, not yet. Well, there's a list on the notice board in the lobby. I'll show you. Thanks. Have you met Hubert yet? No. Oh, you must meet Hubert. He's one of your ancestors, old boy. There. What is it? A specimen? Oh, we'd be very offended if he thought that. He's the mascot, idol, and oldest inhabitant of St. Swithin's Medical School. My dear fellow, I'm terribly sorry. The old Sir Lancelot, uh, Spratt, you know, presented him to the college when he was a student. Uh, last year, St. Christmas tried to pinch him after we won the championship. <laughs> was it set two that was? Three fractured mandibles. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Tony. Here we are. Diggs, 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 Diggs. Now, two students sharing a flat. Have spare room, nine foot six by six foot nine. How tall are you? <laughs> Medical student received an understanding household. Terms moderate, quiet, no Irish gentleman taken. Mrs. Groker, 24, Elm Crescent, NW10. We're all just one big happy family here, aren't we, Mr. Porter? Home from home. And we're all free to come and go, just as we please, as long as it isn't after 10.30 at night. We don't have visitors, male or female, in our rooms, Mr. Williams. We don't spend more than 10 minutes in the bathroom, Mr. Barton, do we? And we none of us smoke in our bedrooms. Well, now then, uh, the support of the ancient Greek. Mr. Williams is at the London School of Economics. Greetings, comrade. This is my daughter, Millicent, Mr. Sparrow. How do you do? Mr. Sparrow is a medical gentleman, Millie. How nice. I always think it's nice to have a doctor in the house. <laughs> Saw a lovely film about a doctor once. He operated on a beautiful girl and married her. <clears throat> Come in. Doctor, I'm ever so sorry to trouble you, but will you examine my foot? Well, I, I'm not really a doctor, you know. I'm, uh, 
Only a student. Well, that's almost the same thing, isn't it? Well... What's the uh, matter with your foot? I think I must have twisted it or something. It's ever so painful. Oh, all right. Oh, thanks. Oh, don't bother to take off your stocking. I can manage just as well with it on. That hurt? Yes. Does that hurt? Yes. But I don't mind. You've got such lovely, soft hands. I, there's nothing seriously wrong. A cold poultice. That's the thing, a cold poultice. Is that all? Uh, yes, that will do the trick. Will you put it on, Tom? No, I think you'd better get your mother to do that for you. I'm very busy at the moment. Oh, well, thanks a lot. Good night. <laughs> Good night. Do I really have to learn all this? I'm afraid so, sir. Oh, these are nothing. You wait till you start your clinical studies. And don't worry, though. I'll see you through. Uh, may I recommend this? It's not actually on your list. But if there's any difficulty with all of these, you might be very glad of it. W what is it? A student's friend. It's a great help in time of trouble. Fits very easily into the pocket. Oh, all right. Put it with the others. Oh, yeah, well, sir. You won't regret that. Oh, and I must give you a copy of this. Yes, and I also want a skeleton. Naturally, sir. I can't get anywhere without a skeleton. Uh, would you like the ordinary skeleton at ten pounds or the deluxe with extra hands and feet? I think the ordinary one will do. Well. You know, I'm not sure, but this one might suit me better. Oh, no, sir. This one has the most perfect pelvis of any skeleton I've seen. Well. It is, old boy. If I go on like this, I shall run a risk of passing the exam. Well, don't you want to? Heaven forbid. I must knock this up somehow. Now, let's see. What have we got here? Just one of this, chum. Little lump pom pom. Little lump pom pom. A little drop of what you fancy. That's the most pleasing effect, don't you think? <laughs> there you are. Ah, ta. Mrs. Rivington Lomax. Mrs. Rivington Lomax. You know, I wouldn't know who she was. Who was Mrs. Rivington Lomax? A hospital benefactress or something? A benefactress, but not a St. Swithin's. Of me. As a matter of fact, she was my grandmother, bless her old heart. Rather a gruesome old lady, really, but well to do. She spent the long drawn out twilight of her life surrounded by the medical profession, about every member of which she was absolutely besotted. <laughs> and one morning she said to me over a rusk, Richard, she said, if you'll train to be a doctor, I'll allow you a thousand a year while you're doing so. Blimey. Well, as you know, a medical training can last a lifetime. One wishes it. So, of course, you accept it. Hmm. She popped it into her will that very evening, old boy. It's not exactly a gracious living. But at least one hasn't got to do anything sordid like working for it. I've never been partial to anything strenuous, have you? Mm. Top six? Mm. One, two, six a zing, boom, boom, six a zing, boom, boom, six a zing, boom, zing, boom, zing, boom, boom, six a zing, boom, boom, six a zing, boom, boom, six a zing. And this experiment demonstrates that the faster the subject pedals, the more oxygen he consumes. Faster, my lad, faster. Put you back into it. You've got to work, you know, work. And that applies to you all. You've all got to work. And now, drains, ladies and gentlemen. Drains. Immensely important factors in the health of the public. 
I've studied them all my life. You must know all about them too if you're going to be efficient, doctors. There's only one thing more important than drainage. What is that? Suing. <laughs> Come in. Well? It's gone and moved up to my hip now. Look out. Landlady's daughter. The oldest joke in the world. Yes, well, this one went a bit too far. Women are all the same, boy. I was talking to a lad in the psychiatric ward the other day. He calls it behavior pattern or something. I've given him a notice. Well, I don't quite get why. She sounds rather a good show. <laughs> if you like that sort of thing. Oh. Doesn't do your rugby any good. Have you found anywhere else? No. Nope. You clean in your habits? Hmm? Well, I mean, you drink beer in bed. No. Oh. no. I was going to suggest you move in with all of us, but... I doubt if the domestic climate would be congenial. I could always uh, learn to drink beer in bed. Ah! Oh, no. Come in, will you? Well, actually, I think I've made a mistake. I... I probably come to the wrong flat. I was looking for somebody called Grimsdyke. Come in. I'm his fiance, Stella. I live in the flat below. Oh. How do you do? You're going to sleep in there. Have you had tea? Hmm? And no, I haven't yet. Oh, the kitchen's in there. Make some if you want it. I have to go. I'm in a hurry. I'm borrowing the bathroom because mine doesn't work. If you'll excuse me. Yes. Oh, could you do this for me? It got caught. Um, certainly. <clears throat> <clears throat> Thank you. And uh, will you bring me a cup in? What, in there? Yes, I don't mind. You're all doctors, aren't you? Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. There you are. Sorry I wasn't here to meet you, old boy. I was being feudal with my tailor. Made yourself at home? Uh, yes. Uh, there's a lady called Stella in there having a bath. Ah, Stella, my fiancé, you've met. Mm. Ravishingly beautiful, adores me. Splendid thing to have about the house. <laughs> Did you notice her sternum? No. You should. It's exquisite. Richard! Oh, she probably wants her back washed. <laughs> I sometimes wonder if this is what Mrs. Rivington Lomax envisaged for her favourite grandson. Richard! Coming, dear. Hello, darling. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot mm. to tell Simon I had a fiancé. I have something to tell you, Richard. You haven't. Oh, not much I haven't. No, I'm serious. I've been thinking. I'm not going to marry you. What? I hope that boy brought his own soap. Of course you're going to marry me. You're in love with me. Mm-hmm. Oh. But I want to be the wife of a proper doctor. I can't spend the rest of my life as the wife of a student. It wouldn't be decent. Now I must hurry or I'll miss my train. Did you tell him that we all have our own soap? Oh, to hell with his soap. What's this about a train? I've got a ticket for Sweden. They have a lot of proper doctors there. Ticket for Sweden? Yes. It's in my bag. But do you realize what this means? I shall have to qualify. Yes. Well, if I qualify, my grandmother's allowance will stop. Yes. Well, if Granny's allowance stops, we won't have... Good heavens, woman, I shall have to work. Yes. And you say you're in love with me. I am. Aren't you in love with me? No. You know I am. But aren't you in love with my grandmother just a teeny weeny bit? Mm-mm. Oh. But if you were a proper doctor, I'd love you and your grandmother. Well... Now I must wash and go to Sweden. I must have time to think. Five minutes. I'm a very quick bath lady. <laughs> You've got to work, gentlemen. Work, 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 Hydroxyl groups are substituted for one of two hydrogen atoms linked to one carbon atom. Two stereoisomers are possible. Now, we use the Greek letters alpha and beta to indicate the isomers on which the hydroxyl groups are above and below the plane of the ring, respectively. That's, uh, um, 
perfectly clear, I suppose. I can't think why we didn't select a profession that doesn't need exams, like conjurers or cabinet ministers. Hey, do you think there'll be a question about sarcoidosis? Oh, Lord, what on earth, sir? <laughs> I have the foggiest idea, man. If there's one on anxiety and neurosis, I'm home and dry. <laughs> you are nervous. Oh, my. Oh. Well, we're not exactly overflowing with confidence at this moment. You know, your psychological attitude's entirely wrong. You're expecting failure. I'm not. I just don't admit the idea of failure. It doesn't exist. I expect a pass. One wonders which examiner will be frustrated enough to make it. examination paper. It was an instrument of torture. Sarcoidosis. They must have heard me say it. Well, it's over now. There's far, far worse to come, old man. Excuse me. See? Easy, wasn't it? Yeah. Your slip showing. <laughs> <laughs> I feel very peculiar. Are you ill? I don't know. I think he's passing that anatomy exam. It's upset me. Clever boy. Mm. I feel better. It's extraordinary how efficacious a dose of female companionship is. Simon, I think you should have a female companion. Oh, should I? Taffy? Yeah? Don't you think Simon ought to have a female companion? Oh, no. Not till after the rugby season. Thank you very much. I've got quite enough to do already, thanks. Well, I'm worried that he's harboring a mother fixation or something. Well, I don't think I am. Well, I think we ought to find out. Now, who should we get for you? I will be your female companion, too. I have plenty of time. <laughs> That's a very unethical suggestion. <laughs> Come and get it. Dinner is served. Cat. Fish and chips. Well, oh. it's better than baked beans. You put any salt on the chips? Yep. We're trying to find a girlfriend for Simon. We think it's about time you had a little practical education. Have you got any suggestions? What about rigor mortis? Rigor mortis. That's the girl. Who else? Rigor mortis. Oh, one of the staff nurses. Not a great beauty, but a kind heart. All right for a trial run, old boy. Oh, sure, I want a trial run. Of course you do. Oh, nothing to it, my dear fellow. Just hold her hand and look plaintive. job to get here tonight. I had to swap my late duty with Nurse Gibson's bedpans. Oh. That was just before we had that awful case where we had to use the stomach pump. Okay. Um, would you rather have some cocoa? Mm. It is customary for me, as dean of this hospital, to welcome new students at the beginning of each year and to address a few words to those who are already part of the way up the ladder towards qualifying. Among the latter are some whom I must confess I had regarded as permanent fixtures on the bottom rung. However, they have, to my surprise, and I suspect to theirs, succeeded in doing enough work in the past two years to pass their anatomy and other exams. I can only hope this state of affairs will continue throughout the next three. This term, they will commence their clinical training in the wards. I wish them, though not very hopefully, well. Toothbrush, sir? Stethoscope. Oh, certainly, sir. This way, sir. Any particular type of chess piece, sir? And this type's very popular, light and well-balanced. No, no, I think that's a little old for you, sir. What about this one? Perhaps you'd care to try it for size. 
Oh, yes. That's very much more you, sir. Comfy? Comfy? Oh. I'm terribly sorry. Uh, yes, I think so. You'll find it'll slip very easily into any of the recognized resting positions. I don't know which one you prefer. There's, there's the posterior cervical. Uh, or this, the, the axillary inguinal position, sir. It's a very popular model this season, sir. I think this will do. Uh, just starting in the wards, I suppose. Uh, will you pay or shall we charge it to your account? You boys coming in? Yes, sir. Oh, don't be so eager, Taffy. Anybody think you were charging them private fees? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> You're wasting your time, old boy. Nurses only have eyes for doctors. Well, you're practically doctors already. Practically. And who are you? We're the students, sister. Oh. Are you? Well, I do not like students. However, I'm forced to put up with you. But I warn you, I stand no nonsense in my ward. Is that clear? As crystal, sister. Hmm. You will examine patients 5, 12, 18, and 20. You will replace the bedclothes neatly. You will not walk upon any part of the floor that has recently been polished. And you will not talk to the nurses on any except strictly professional matters. Is that understood? Yes. Very well. You may proceed. Proceed? Proceed where? Uh, choose a number and examine it, I suppose. Hey, there's a new lot of students coming. We can have a bit of fun. I don't feel like fun. Oh, cheer up, Alfie. You're not dead yet. You soon will be if you let those students get at you. Do you think they'll know we've never examined a patient before? Oh, don't be silly. They think we're doctors. I can hear the sea. <laughs> Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, would you mind if I examined you? I'm all yours, Doctor. Oh, dear. Uh, <coughs> well. <coughs> He's 76. I just took it myself. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, would you excuse me just a minute? You stuck to? Yeah. What page is subacute appendicitis? I have no idea. I'm looking for the chest. What are you doing with your bedclothes pushed back, Mr. Briggs? I may examine, nurse. Are you? By whom? Uh, good afternoon, nurse. Good afternoon. Now, I'd just like to examine your chest. It's my stomach that's wrong, Doctor. <laughs> yes, of course it is. Now, what are your symptoms? My hydronephrosis, nephrolithiasis, and attacks of renal colic. Thank you very much. He has hammer toes, too. <clears throat> Graham said the original diagnosis was wrong. Surgery wasn't necessary. I mean, after Forgive all, me, old boy, but aren't we inclined to be talking shop? Hmm? I say, aren't we inclined to be talking shop? No, I'm terribly sorry. You must broaden your outlook, Simon. There are better things in life than Graham's diagnosis. <laughs> Such as what? Such as that, for instance. Taxi! Taxi! See what I mean? Taxi! Oh, look out! Oh, oh there you we are. You all right? Yeah. Uh, uh, thanks, though. Oh, hunt those roads hard when you get that close to them. I'm ever so sorry, miss. You okay? Yes, yes. It was entirely my fault. I was much too keen and eager about that taxi. You sure, miss? Uh, wouldn't you just like to come to the hospital and we'll look you over? Oh, they're really Tony my stockings. And I don't think hospitals can do much about them, can they? Or oh, can they these days? Uh, no, no. Uh, I think you ought to let my colleague examine you, madam, just to be on the safe side. I promise you I'm all right. I... Are you a doctor? Oh, well, uh, he's one of the mainstays of our little hospital. Aren't you, old boy? Eh? Uh, yes, well, yes. How very glamorous. Well, I'll certainly make it a point to visit this hospital, if it's ever anything more than a pair of stockings. Do. I'm sure we can always find a bed for her. Eh, hey, Simon? Hmm? Uh, yes, uh, sure. Well, if you could help me into the taxi, I think I ought to go home. Uh, yes, certainly. 
Then three Cornwallis mules. Goodbye. Hmm. Bye. Thirty-three Cornwallis mules. <laughs> Not a bad fit at all. Now I know it's unnecessary to say so, old boy, but no gravy spilt or anything like that. I beg. It's brand new, right? And Simon, dear, when you make love to her, do not be too English. Be a little more aggressive, like this. So you can do without that, Stella. He's late already. Got some oh. cash? Yes, I have. Three pounds. I'll form the microscope. Oh, that'll do. Don't you go drinking champagne and stuff like that now. Why not? Well, because it's bad for the wind, that's why. But where did you say I'd got to take her? I keep telling you, Fernando's. I haven't been there for a bit, but they used to do a jolly good all-in for ten bob. Hurry up, come, taxi! Just mention my name. Where's my coat? Here you are. Little flower. <laughs> take it easy now. Good luck, dear. Good luck. Now. Good evening, madame. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Oh, Simon, I won't be a minute. I'll uh, have a martini if you're ordering. Right. Um, uh, Mr. Benskin told me to come here. Mr. Benskin? I'm afraid I do not recollect any one of their names, sir. Oh, he comes here quite often. Oh, probably before the restaurant changed hands. Uh, you wish for a table, sir? I'm afraid we are very busy, but uh, as you're a friend of Miss Minster, I shall be happy to accommodate you. Oh, you, you, you know Miss Minster. <laughs> Who does not? Something to drink, sir? Hmm? Oh, oh, yeah, yes. Uh, um, a dry martini and a pint of bitter, please. We don't serve beer here, sir, I'm afraid. Oh. Oh, well, then two dry martinis. Large, sir? Yes, of course. Very. Your are looking to get, sir. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I do like this place. Oh, do you? Uh, do you come here very often? Fairly. But never with a doctor before. Whereabouts um, exactly in Harley Street are you? Well, I'm not actually in Harley Street. I do research mostly at the hospital. Oh. Your martini, sir? Oh, thank you. Simon, these look absolutely enormous. Your bill, sir? Uh, is that absolutely right? Two trebles, sir. Trebles? Are you in need of a stimulant? <laughs> yes, I am, rather. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Oh, cheers. Mm? Oh, cheers. Uh, good evening, sir. Uh, good evening, Miss Minster. Uh, would you care to order now? Well, um, uh, did you have any of that caviar that I had last time? Yes, Miss Minster, I think so. Also, we have some pâté fresh in and uh, some smoked salmon. And after, there is some delicious filet de boeuf or some uh, chicken à la Kiev. Uh, do you know, I, I, I don't feel very hungry at the moment. I don't think we ought to just finish our drinks and then order later. Yes, if, if you'd like. Very well, sir. I had to sit through one of those rather heavy uh, luncheons by the hospital governor, sir. Oh. I hope you'll forgive me. Uh, will you excuse me? I left my cigarettes in my coat. Of course. Isabel, how lovely to see you. Helen, hello, Paul. Hello. Oh, Taffy? Taffy, it's, it's Simon here. Hmm? Simon. Listen, love, I, I'm in a terrible jam. No, I can't explain about it now. Listen, as soon as I've hung up here, will you call me back? It's Mayfair, 11494. Yes, say you're the hospital with a very urgent message for Dr. Sparrow to come at once. He's awfully sweet, really. He's very young looking, but he must be absolutely brilliant to be able to afford to bring his pick up here. <laughs> <laughs> Simon, this is Mr. and Mrs. Gray, Dr. Sparrow. How do you do? How do you do? How do you do? Uh, Dr. Sparrow, I'm a little hesitant to suggest this, but uh, I was wondering if we couldn't all have dinner together. Uh, well, I, I mean for you and Isabel to be my guests. I'm celebrating a little win at the races, and uh, we'd love to make a party of it. Uh, you mean for us to be your guests? <laughs> yes. We, we'd absolutely love that. It's awfully kind of you. Fine, fine. Well, uh, let's order, shall we? Simon's not very hungry. Oh, I think I could pick it a little. <laughs> Dr. Sparrow, sir? Yes? Your hospital have just rang, sir. You're wanted at once. Oh. Oh, oh how dreadful. Can't you just have something? Well, well, I don't see why. They stressed uh, the urgency of the case, sir. Oh. Oh, well, I suppose if, if you must, you must. Yes. 
Fetch the doctor's coat, would you? What? Oh, yes, my coat. Thank you, sir. Oh, what a pity. We were going to have such a lovely evening. Simon was going to buy me some of that delicious caviar. Well, we can have another little party next week. Then he can buy us all caviar. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I smoked salmon. Caviar. Patty de foie gras. Fresh into. Delicious filet de boeuf. And chicken a la Kiev. Good morning, Sir Lancelot. Good morning. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning, sir. Not late, I hope. Not at all, sir. Come along, my man. You must pursue me. You must pursue me. I suppose you've got another half dozen boring cholecystectomies today. Yes, sir. After last night, I feel like one myself. How about that gastrectomy I did yesterday? Not so well, sir. Oh. Pity. Great pity. Morning, sister. Good morning, Sir Lancelot. Everything ready? All ready, sir. Splendid. Now, you just lie still, old fellow. I've just got to discuss your case with these uh, young doctors here. Take his pajamas off, sister. You, examine his abdomen. Take that grubby fist away. The first rule of diagnosis, gentlemen, eyes first and most, hands next and least, and tongue not at all. Look! Have you looked? Yes, sir. See anything? No, sir. Very good. Carry on. Gently, man, gently. You're not making bread. Don't forget to be a successful surgeon. You need the eye of a hawk, the heart of a lion, and the hands of a lady. You found it? Yes, sir. Well, what is it? A lump. Well, what do you make of it? Is it kidney? Is it spleen? Is it liver? Is it dangerous? No, don't worry, my good man. You won't understand our medical talk. Uh, you, what are we going to do about it? Um, cut it out, man. Cut it out. And where shall we make the incision? Nothing like large enough. Keyhole surgery. Damnable. Couldn't see anything. Like this. Now, don't worry. This is nothing whatever to do with you. Now, you. When we've cut through the skin, what's the first substance we shall find? Uh, subcutaneous fat, sir. Quite right. And then we come across the surgeon's worst enemy, which is what? Speak up, man! Blood, you numbskull! You cut a patient, he bleeds until the processes of nature form a clot and stop it. This interval is known scientifically as the bleeding time. You, what's the bleeding time? Uh, ten past ten, sir. Ten past ten, he said. I've never been so sorry for anybody in all my life. Old Sir Lancelot blew up. Hello. Sister Virtue nearly had a baby. Hey! Have you seen that little fair-haired nurse in the ward, eh? The one who looks after your patient's fellow? Yes. Oh, what about that for a bit of homework, eh? Not for me, thank you. That's the one that winked at me when he asked me that wretched question. She winked again when he bowled me out. Winked twice, eh? Yes. Oh, you must follow that up. I don't want to follow it up, thank you very much. I've followed up quite enough already. Of course you must. You must leave no stone unturned, must you, Tony? Oh, certainly not. But you know what nurses are. Oh, they're all right for a flip. Yeah. But they all suffer from tinnitus. What nurse is that? Tinnitus? Oh. Uh, ringing in the ears, old man. Wedding bells. Isn't that so, Jessup? Well, I know plenty of you young gents who've got up and landed before you even knew what a worm was. Rubbish. Press on with us, Simon. We're right behind you. Are you two at him again? Why can't you let that boy be celibate if he wants to be? Celibate? He doesn't want to be. He likes girls. What? No, I don't want to be celibate. Well, you? then, how do you expect me to pick a rugby team that's strong and fit? You must ask her out. I don't want to ask her out. I don't even like her very much. That's not the point. It's your duty to the spirit of scientific experiment. Anyway, you've never get near a nurse with the sisters around. Ah, but love laughs at sisters, eh, Jessup? Now, look. There's been rigor mortis or rigor mortis. There's been the most expensive girl in the world. This is the last thing I do for you, all scientific experimentation. It's beautiful, isn't it? All right, I suppose. I wonder where all the water comes from. The river. Hmm? The Thames. I said the water probably all comes from the Thames. Oh, I see. Hmm. Could we have some tea? Yes, if you like. Well, we might as well now we're here. All right. 
You didn't really want to take me out at all, did you? Of course I did. Why do you think I asked you? That's the point. I don't think you did. I think you were put up to it. What a filthy thing to say. I bet the other said to you, that little fair nurse is taking a great interest in you. You ought to get acquainted. It's absolute nonsense. It's not. It's true, isn't it? They cooked it up. No, they didn't. Admit it. <laughs> oh. Yes, all right. In a way, they did. There, I knew it. Why did you come out with me if you knew it? Well, I didn't know it then. I thought it'd be rather fun. I like going out. I rather like you. Uh oh. Now I feel absolutely awful. Oh, don't worry about it. We all make mistakes. And now we know the truth. There's no point in going on with this. I'll clear off and go home. Oh, please don't go. Honestly, I'm terribly sorry. I... I like you, too. Uh, now we know the truth. Couldn't we start all over again? I'm an awful clot, really. I wanted to ask you out often, but I didn't dare ask you on my own. Why not? You always look so jolly superior, as if I got holes in my socks. You're always laughing at me. I wasn't, Simon, honestly. That ruddy suitcase. Oh, that. Well, it was rather funny. Well, <laughs> I suppose it was, really. Look, let's start again from scratch, shall we? We'll buy a gun, we'll go to every place on it. Right, from start to finish. Right, come on. <laughs> Yes, sir. Well, get scrubbed up then. Hurry up. First time you assisted? Uh, yes, sir. Well, don't get under my feet, whatever you do, or I'll have your guts out. Yes, sir. Well, I remember when I was dresser for old Sir James Willoughby, he chased me out of the operating theatre with a muscle scalpel for getting under his feet. Oh, really? You might remind me to get some dry ginger on the way home. My wife will play merry hell if I forget it again. Yes, sir. Don't forget, if you feel faint, fall backwards, not across the patient. Everybody's pampered to death these days. They're all bewitched with free teeth, spectacles, and psychiatrists. Good afternoon, all. Good, Good afternoon, afternoon. Sir. All right, let's get started. Left nephrectomy. Come over here, boy. You can't learn surgery from the doorpost. Now, remember, although it looks easy to you, gentlemen, I've been doing this operation for 20 years. All right to start, Stubbins? He looks a bit blue down my end, but uh, I suppose you'll know your own business. Sister, how the hell do you expect me to operate with this jam spreader? Why is it that every operation I do in this hospital is plagued by incompetent assistants and blunt instruments? Don't cry me, boy. That's much better. Hang on to your swabs, gentlemen. This is terribly important. You can cut the patient's throat while he's under an anaesthetic and nobody will mind, but if you leave anything inside, you'll be in the Sunday papers in no time. Now for the first incision. Swab, man, swab! Have I got to do everything by myself here? Watching boy? Catch him, someone. Another Spencer Wells, sister. Hurry up, woman. Edge of Cordatus Lumborum, gentlemen. See it? Another clip, sister, right? He passed out. Oh, Simon. Well, don't be so silly. Thousands of people pass out their first time in the theatre, don't they? That's right, sir. Now, I remember Mr. Willoughby when he started here first. Uh, sir James, he is now. He couldn't stay on his pins for three months in the theatre. Nobody minded. And look at him. You see? Yeah, I bet they didn't push him out in a trolley. Oh, for heaven's sake. Have another drink and forget it. <laughs> Do you think I will make a doctor? Yes, I do. Well, you're a jolly good nurse. <laughs> In this case, anyway. <laughs> hey, Gov. Oh, Briggs. I'm terribly sorry. Were, were you looking for someone? Uh, yes, I was, actually.
Nurse. Yes, Mr. Briggs, what is it? Just a minute, Mr. Lodge. Nurse. Why, my student here says that I've been written up for the wrong medicine. Oh, does he? Yeah. Well, I better see your prescription sheet. That seems perfectly all right to me. Yes, well, what time does he say should take you? Six o'clock. Six o'clock. Is there any trouble here, nurse? No, sister. Mr. Sparrow was just discussing a forthcoming operation. Hmm. You better go back to Mr. Lodge. Yes, sister. And to those of you who are now entering your fifth, and let us hope, final year of your training, I would remark that if you are to master the subjects laid down in the year's syllabus, anaesthetics, pediatrics, obstetrics and gynaecology, ear, nose and throat and so on, if you are to master them sufficiently to qualify in your final examinations, you will have to use all your powers of concentration and clear-mindedness. Hmm. Hmm. Um, do you mind if I try this on you? No, go sure. on. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you comfortable? Sure. Do you mind if I actually give you a whiff just to see what happens? Oh, no, thank you very <laughs> much. <laughs> Listen, honestly, I won't put you right out, I promise. Look, if you were to put me just half out, I might never get back in again. But putting out is what we're supposed to be practicing. Yeah, well, thank you very much. I'd rather practice on myself. Let's be a sport, please. We're in this business together. Yes, and I don't want to be the sleeping partner. Oh, no. Simon. Yeah, I'll just repeat. Uh-huh. Yeah. Look, I'm afraid I'll be late this evening. She's given me extra duty. What's the matter with her? Oh, I don't know. I think she's gunning for me. I'll be off at half past seven. All right, same place? Yes. I must fly. Sister Virtue wants her tea. See you later. All right. Taffy! Taffy! What are you doing? Come on. Come on. Whoa. Hurry up. She's screaming for that. She's on the war path. Hurry. All right. <laughs> Nurse Gibson, that was Orange Pico. Don't you cry, my little pretty. Never you mind. Don't you cry, my little beautiful. Do you think I ever look like that? You still do. I'm a bit worried about getting out of my first call. Never had a baby before. Hey, this one's developing antisocial tendencies, I think. Yeah. Ooh. The more I read, the more I wonder why Mother Nature didn't settle for a less complicated way of populating the good earth. I can't remember any of this stuff. I suppose I shall manage when I'm faced with it in practice. Stella, my little flower. When we're married, we'll raise something simple, like geraniums. Oh, no, we're going to have lots of children. Six or seven, I think. Six or seven? Get started on that. <gasps> Hormones control not only the psychological manifestation of our emotions, but directly colour these emotions themselves. We take, for example, the so-called emotion of love. But after all, what are we? Just a collection of cells, nerve impulses, corpuscles, collagen fibres and hormones. And so, of course, are women. <clears throat> Lovely. Move? No, for Pete's sake, man, oh. I just got a sight of a disc. I can't help your disc, I've just found your eardrum. Uh, well, let me tell you that my disc is just as important as your drum. Look, it may not interest you in the very least, but that's the very first eardrum I've ever seen. Oh, any fool can see a drum, man. It takes Whoa, real brace to see a disc. And what are little girls made of? Christmas Eve. What a time to start midwifery. I only hope no mother starts producing in the next eight hours anyway. Ah, uh, don't worry, man. The people around here seem to go in for large families, so you or the mother should know something about it. Ah, hmm. oh, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. 
You two boys on call tonight? Yes. Ever had a berth before? Well, not actually. Oh, well. The midwife will be there to help you through. Here's your tackle. Remember, check it before you go to your mother. Have you got your threepence? Threepence? What for? To telephone the hospital if you get into trouble. And mind it's not too late. Who's first out? Him! Him. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you better make up your minds. Well, things seem nice and quiet at the moment, anyway. Ha! Once it starts, they pop up like rabbits out of a warren. Oh, well. Good hunting. <laughs> ah, Merry Christmas. And ha, ah, Merry Christmas to you, sister. Oh. <laughs> I just popped in to see how things are. Quiet. Yeah, same in casualty. We're just taking time off to step up to Prudence Ward. That night nurse, you know. Oh, I've been on her trail for weeks. And it was you who said beware of nurses. Oh, this one's all right. Just wants her stocking filled a little. Mm -hmm. Christmas Eve, you know. See you later. Well, toss you for who has a baby first. Tails. Tails. It's me. sister may be round. Oh, I'd brave every sister from here to Tibet to wish you a happy Christmas, you luscious little Florence Nightingale, you. Don't be silly. Would you, um, like some cocoa? Cocoa? I didn't come for cocoa, I came for you. Now wish me a happy Christmas, you succulent starched uniform with a soft center. Mr. Benskin, I'll scream. Not a very loud scream, that. Well, uh, I couldn't wake the patient. <sighs> Mr. Sparrow, sir. Mr. Sparrow. What? There's a case just come up. Oh, Where? I've got the address here. Mrs. Cooper. She's an old customer. This will be her seventh. Here we are, 23 Paradise Street. Okay. What's up? What's the time? It's zero hour. Oh. Good luck, man. I think I shall need it. The bicycle's outside. Only mind how you go with it. It's a bit temperamental until you're used to it. Taffy, wake up. Yes, yes. All right, right, where's my bag? Taffy. Oh, it's you. I thought it was a baby. Taffy, wake up. You, you, you've got to help me. So, something terrible has happened. Oh, what's up? You know that little girl upstairs? Mm -hmm. The one I popped up to see? Yeah. Oh, wake up, oh. man. Don't go to sleep. Go away. Well, I was up there just now. And I, I was feeling pretty good, what with it being Christmas Eve, and, and she was being cooperative. Disgusting. Eh? Well, what with the soft lights and the mistletoe and everything, you know? Strike me down before I knew where I was. I, I proposed to the woman. She accept? Accept? She said yes, please. <laughs> well, congratulations. You'll make a lovely bride. you go upstairs and tell her it was only a joke? Yeah. We were hauled up for breach of promise and kicked out of the hospital. <laughs> mm. What can I do, Taffy? Well, it's beyond me, man. Should have stuck to football, see? What do you think you're doing? Sunbathing? Quick, I'm going to a Terry's case. Oh, that's different, Doctor. Hop in the back. Go. It's 23 Paradise Street. Hello? Hello? Hello, 
Crimson Sight? Look, you, you, you've got to help me. Uh, Who the devil's that? Well, it's me. Ben Skin, you fool. Look, something terrible has happened. Oh, oh, oh. Aha. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. I take it you're not sold on the idea of marrying this ministering angel? Oh. Thanks. Want a hand, Doc? Father of twins myself. No, thanks. All right. Happy Christmas. Same to you. Good evening. I'm from the hospital. You're not worried, Doctor. She's getting near. Is she? I've got the water boiling. Good. Is the midwife here? No, Doctor. No? Stuck in the snow, I wouldn't wonder. Still, it doesn't matter now you're here, does it, Doctor? No. Is the doctor, love? You're a genius, old boy. That's wonderful. Right, I'll get cracking right away. I can never thank you enough, old man. Bye. <laughs> And be patient. I'll try, Doctor. Where's your husband? Oh, he's asleep next door. Asleep? Does he always sleep oh, when no, you... he didn't for the first three. Oh, I see. Any sign of the little duck yet, Doctor? No, not yet. Any sign of the midwife? No, I don't expect you'll get here now. Oh. Is there a turf fence somewhere about here? Down at the corner. I'll oh, just pop down oh, there. Oh, but it's out of order. It has been for weeks. Oh. Well, you'd better boil some more water. More? There's enough there now to bath the old look, Dr. Bernardo's. Grandma, hot water, quick. thing now. A very close thing, old boy. Good lad. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, girls. I've got some news for you. Tony Benskin proposed to me last night, and I accepted him. He gave me this. Isn't he sweet? Goodbye, Mrs. Cooper. You've got a jolly nice baby. Oh, it's the nicest one I ever had, Doctor. Thanks to you. Oh, I'm afraid I didn't do very much, really. Oh, but you did. You made all the difference. You were so kind. I expect the Doctor does hundreds every day, don't you, Doctor? Well, not quite hundreds. May, may I call him after you, Doctor? I would like to. Yes, Mrs. Cooper. Yes, certainly, if, if you'd like to. My name's Simon. Simon. Oh, that is a nice name. Oh, I'll call him Simon, and then he'll be reminded of you as long as he lives. Thank you, Mrs. Cooper. It's a great honor. Must be wonderful to be a doctor. Yes. Yes, it must. Goodbye. Goodbye, doctor. Bye, Simon.
Tony, get your shoulders down. Oh, he must learn to get his... Oh, never mind that, like darling. Come on. Now then, boy, into it. Heave the nut made of feathers. It's all. Swing the ball out of the quarter, boy. That's a big... Hey! Pick it up, man! What happened? We scored, my dear Dean. Have a swing. Well, thank you very much. Too good. Come on, Bolton. Right through the timber, boy. Congratulations. St. Swithers played a wonderful game. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Please, 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 please
the driver of this ambulance? If you like. Come on. Come on. Nurse, would you ask the officer to kindly close the door? Well, didn't you hear what the doctor said, my man? Shut the door and go away. Something wrong? We have a very urgent casualty here. Tell the driver it's a matter of life and death. death. Oh, we must drive to the hospital. We're all going for a nice drive, but not to the hospital. Nursey darling. No. Students? What sort of students? Veterinary array, I presume. Oh, no, sir. Medical, sir. Well, and is that a medical student, too? It might well be. It has the same lofty intellectual expression and hygienic appearance as the rest of them. No, sir. They say it's a sort of mascot, sir. It was in this football match. Oh, it plays football, does it? On ice? No, sir. Not play, sir. It was on the touchline. Thumping its chest and bellowing pass, I suppose. I still don't understand what it was doing in the ambulance. Can any of you enlighten me? We were rescuing it, sir. You were the nurse? Yes, sir. Not very convincing casting, if I may use a theatrical expression. Well, this won't do, you know. Chivalry is an excellent thing, but really the court has more to occupy itself with than the rescue of gorillas in distress. Stuffed or unstuffed. Have any of you anything more you wish to say? You? No, sir. You? No, sir. You? No, sir. You? No, sir. Very well, you'll each pay a fine of 40 shillings. And I have no doubt that your hospital authorities will have something further to say to you in the matter. It is unnecessary for me to say that your conduct has been quite unfitting for future members of the medical profession. You'll agree, gentlemen? Certainly. Disgusting. You will each be fined the sum of 10 pounds. And I warn you, if any of you commit the slightest breach of discipline during the rest of your time here, you will be expelled from the medical school forthwith. That is all. I will not tolerate this radiism. Ten quid. I can't raise that. Ten, it's twelve with the two the magistrate gave us. Well, I'm done for. I've already pulled the microscope. Well, I'm afraid Mrs. Rivington Lomax can't help, boys. I've only just finished paying for the car. If you don't find it, we're done. Pay fines in 24 hours. That's the rule. <coughs> you realize, you miserable bunch of worms, that you've disgraced the entire hospital? Well, you've had your punishment. And richly deserved, too. In my day, they'd thrown you out straight away. Behaving like a bunch of hooligans just because the hospital won a football match. Here, you. Take this prescription down to the dispenser and get it filled for me straight away. Oh, so and so. What does he want a prescription for? Arsenic, to take himself, I hope. What's it say, Simon? Pay Simon Sparrow. Forty pounds. Lancelot Spratt. Stella, my little flower, would you like to give me a long, lingering kiss? No. Why? I'm reading. What? Pamphlet about Spain. About Spain? Why? I think I might go there. What for? You'll never be a doctor, ever. You should be studying for your final exams. And all you do is to lie on that sofa and dream. Nonsense. Finals aren't for ages yet. Finals are in exactly four weeks. Tony! Tony! The finals are in four weeks! Four weeks! Four weeks? Well, I'm sunk, Mum! Holy cats, where are my notebooks? Joy. Tell me the answer, please. Don't you know? No. Yes. Oh, I can't. Go on, tell me, please. All right. Six grains, eight hourly for three doses, followed by three grains three times a day for two days, and half that dose four times daily for two days. I shall never get through. Yes, of course you will. I'll ask you something else. Um, 
What are the signs and symptoms of pink disease? I didn't know there was any such thing. Joy? Yes? I've been thinking. If, if I do qualify, I shan't be seeing so much of you, shall I? No, I suppose you won't. Are you always going to be a nurse? Yes, I expect so. Is a pre-systolic murmur at the apex diagnostic of mitral stenosis? Yes. It'd be funny if we met sometime in a hospital and we're both quite old and you were a matron and I was a Harley Street specialist. Yes. you better ask me something else. Do you mind doing this? Of course I don't mind. What is the treatment? Is it? I haven't got a late pass. I'm a stick. Come with you. Oh, what's the time? Three minutes past. I have to get over the roof. Oh, I'll help you. give a decision, our hands are completely tied. Well, I agree, but we could take steps to hurry them up. Well, you know what governors are. What's that? Oh, one of those beastly cats, I should think. Matron, about that meeting, I can only say... did, Mr. Sparrow. Simon! Huh? Simon, are you all right? Oh, Nurse Gibson, won't you join us? Oh. oh. You know, Mr. Sparrow, that it is strictly against the rules of the medical school for a student to enter the nurse's home premises on any pretext. Yes, sir. I didn't actually mean to enter them, sir. That is to say the least of it questionable, seeing that you're in the company of one of the inmates. And anyway, the roof is equally out of bounds, is it not? Yes, sir. Your conduct was quite incompatible with that required of a future doctor from this hospital. You are expelled forthwith from the medical school. But, sir, please, I... That would be all, Mr. Sparrow. Wait a minute, boy. I say, Dean, I know rules are rules, but he hasn't done the girl any harm. And he's a very promising lad, and it's just before his final. He should have considered that when he embarked on this escapade. Oh, I know all about that, but medical students are medical students. You can't expect that they're crowd boys. Besides which, he's the finest rugby footballer we've had for a generation. Might I remind you that I am dean of a medical school, not a football manager? No, I'm afraid my decision is quite irrevocable, Sir Lancelot. Parrish, do you remember when we were students? There was a terrific rag one term after some match or other. Mm, there were plenty. Yes, but I'm reminded of one particular one where some fellow introduced a cart horse into the nurse's home. Oh, yes, I remember. It was a large white one, wasn't it? Well, it was certainly large. That's it. This is all quite irrelevant. Sir and Lancelot. he induced a nurse to play the part of Lady Godiva and ride around the courtyard. She did, bless her. Who was it? It's so long ago, I can't remember. I expect I'm the only person who hasn't forgotten. I remember who it was. Sir Lancelot, I pity these toys should be allowed to die. I think I shall have to retail that one to the students as a little light relief. They'd love it, especially if they knew who was involved. Who was it? Do remind me. I... Oh, yes, I remember now. Yes. That story would be quite sensational if it got around. Just what I was thinking. Mr. Sparrow, would you wait outside? Oh, I don't know. 
he sacked me. And they all started talking about horses or something. Then he said he'd changed his mind and fined me ten quid on the cost of the skylight. What happened to you? Well, it was extraordinary. I was in Sister Virtue's office, waiting for her to take me to Matron, and the phone went. She answered it and talked for a bit. Then she went quite white in the face. I thought she was going to pass out. Then she hung up and said this time she'd overlook it and I could go. Oh. Who was it on the telephone? It sounded rather like Sir Lancelot. Well, what did he say? I couldn't hear clearly, but I thought I heard him say Lady Godiva. Hmm? Lady Godiva. Sit down, my boy, sit down. Don't waste time. <clears throat> Now, uh, do you know which mosquitoes transmit disease to man? Uh, malaria, the female anopheline mosquito. Yes. Theory first postulated in 1894 by Sir Patrick Manson. Manson. <laughs> oh, I remember him well. Charming man. Charming. We met at the BMA meeting in 1914. Or was it 13? Well, it might have been 19. Now, uh, how do you diagnose malaria? Um... Spleen? Yes, that's right. Oh, very good, my boy. Very good indeed. Your question. What is the commonest cause of acute heart failure? Shock, sir. Severe shock. Now, my lad, take a look in there and tell me what you can see. Be careful. Those things cost money. Well, what is it? Trichinosis, sir. What? Well, it's some kind of worms, isn't it? I can't quite recognize them. Worms? Perhaps uh, if you removed your tie from the field of vision, that would help. That would be the worms turning, I presume. Well, my boy, where do you come from? Uh, St. Swithin, sir, number 306. Ah, yes. Now, you see these screens? Well, behind these there are a lot of ladies and gentlemen who volunteered to come here and be prodded around by you blighters so that you can tell us what's wrong with them. Now, you go to number 10, make a thorough diagnosis, and I'll come along and see what you've rooted out. Off you go. Hello, Governor. Briggs. <laughs> Briggs, you're Russ. What are you doing here? How's that nice little nurse of yours? She's eh? fine. I thought we'd cured you. You did, Governor, you did. But I've got a whole new set of things wrong with me now. Oh. Beautiful old mess I am. They say I'm the most interesting case they've had here for years. I've got thyrotoxicosis. Now, shut up, and... Briggs. I've got to find this out for myself. Be quiet. Don't interrupt, Governor. I've got a mild case of thyrotoxicosis. Think of that. Thromboflebitis obliterans. Tremors of the fingers. Loss of weight. Palpitations. Oh, shut all up, kinds Briggs. of being quiet. Quiet. Ribs, sir. What's wrong with them? Empyema, sir. Mm -hmm. And that? Fema, sir. Anything the matter? Um, osteomyelitis, sir. Mm -hmm. Do you mind? And that? Well, come on, come on, come on. I say, it looks like pickled gherkins. And this? There's thyrotoxicosis. The symptoms are loss of weight. Yes. Uh, tremors of the fingers. Yes. And the patient complains of um, palpitations. Any auricular fibrillation? Uh, no. No auricular fibrillation. Excellent. Excellent. And uh, what's the treatment? Well, uh... Well? Operation. Uh, partial thyroidectomy. Splendid. Splendid. Ah, my dear sir. I'm glad to see you seem to be teaching some surgery at St. Swithin's at last. This young fellow's just given a first-rate diagnosis. Really? I'm delighted to hear it. Good afternoon, Mr. Briggs. We've met before, haven't we? Ah, he's a bright lad. I'm sorry you didn't hear him. So am I. Perhaps you'd diagnose another case for us. Well, uh, one's the rule. I'm sure Mr. Sparrow wouldn't mind being an exception to the rule for us. Uh, oh, very well. He's a pleasure to listen to. Come and see what you can make of the case next door, my lad. It's a real stinker. Next to where you are. Come on, don't keep. 
keep me hanging about here all day. Right. I'm a jolly young woman, 23 next birthday, and I come to you complaining that I'm putting on weight. What are you going to do about it? Um, may one ask if you're jolly in an attractive way, sir? Of course I am. You don't think I'm going to waste my time being knock kneed with a squint, do you? Well, in that case, sir, I think I should send you to the nearest antenatal clinic. Good heavens alive, man. If you're going to spend your time sending every decent looking woman under 60 to an antenatal clinic, you won't stay in practice long. You're from St. Swithin's, aren't you? Yes, sir. I thought so. All you blighters have one track minds. All right. I'm a year old baby and I'm brought to you with a pain in the tummy and yelling blue murder. Wah! Well? well? I'd ask the mother if there was anything missing, sir. And what sort of thing? Well, sir, for example, a doorknob? A doorknob. They don't swallow doorknobs anymore. Much more likely to be a knob off the family television set nowadays. Well, what would the symptoms be? All right, all right. I've swallowed a doorknob. What would my symptoms be? Well, I should say mild indigestion. You would, would you? And what are you going to do for me? Give me a swig of castor oil and sit and hope? No, sir. Locate the object and remove it. I should very well think so. And how do you propose to locate the object? Well, I hope the X-ray department would join in the hunt, sir. There isn't one. We're on a desert island. Well, there wouldn't be a doorknob either. <laughs> Nonsense. I'm a traveller in doorknobs, and I've saved my samples from the wreck. Well, where would it be? In the esophagus, sir? Or the stomach? Or the duodenum? Or the jejunum? The jejunum, boy? Do you know where the jejunum is? Below the stomach, sir. Yes. What is this object? A long-distance runner? Do you know where the cecum is? Yes, sir. All right, show me. There, sir. It won't bite you, boy. Where? In there, sir. All right, all right. I said, show me. Don't try and tear it up with the bare hands, and it's not there anywhere. It's here, by McBurney's Point. Do you know where that is? McBurney's Point, sir? Yes. Do you know what it is? Uh, uh, it slipped my memory for the moment, sir. It's no business to. Supposing I wanted to take a man's appendix out and start it off by cutting off his feet, simply because I'd forgotten where McBurney's Point was. McBurney's Point, you ignoramus. Here, take your coat off, and I'll show you. Yes, sir. Go on, take your coat off. Great heavens alive, man, what on earth is that? Well, it's a waistcoat, sir. And you have the effrontery to face the examiners dressed like that? In all my years as a surgeon, I've never seen anything like it. Thank you, sir. I've never seen anything quite like it in all my years as a student. <laughs> Rather fewer than usual this time. The standard's definitely dropping. Oh, people say that every year. Rubbish. I failed three times myself. Doesn't mean a thing. Here, let's have a look. Not him. Hmm. And him. Yes. Not him. No. And him? Well, I don't know. It's a good thing there aren't any exams for elderly eminent surgeons. Otherwise, I should have to take up the other kind of butchery. <laughs> there you are, Jessup. Let them have it. Right, hello, hello. Ah, Dr. Evans. Oh, you're so gloomy about your past, didn't you? You've got a job to buy here. Oh, yes. Assistant medical officer in a prison. A woman's prison, too. Oh. <laughs> I start work at Holloway on Monday. So it's goodbye to this boy. But I'm sorry you failed, though. Oh, yeah, bad show, wasn't it? How's it coming on, Daddy? Oh, there, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I've got a date tonight. Oh, new nurse, just arrived. Real smasher. Next term ought to be all right for your uncle Ben Skinner. Well, good luck. Yeah, thinking of that, Grimstein. Yeah. When does Stella leave? I don't. I thought you said that if you failed, she was going to clear out. She was. But since I started working, she got interested in the noble art of healing. She joins me at the hospital as a student next term. Ah, oh, goody, goody. So I'll be a doctor's husband. Woo! I feel wonderful. You get all the luck. Luck? That's not luck, my dear old boy. That's long-term planning. <laughs> Mrs. Rivington Lomax. Oh, Mrs. Rivington Lomax. Dr. Sparrow? Hmm? Oh, Dr. Sparrow, sir, a message from Dr. Stewart. He says, will you take over in casualties? He's been called out on an urgent case. I'm sorry. Oh, I forgot my stethoscope. Anybody got one? I won't be long. Good luck, Simon. Simon. Hmm? Good luck. Oh, thank you. I seem to have collected a rather lot of these. Do you mind taking some of them back for me? Yes. <laughs> what a shame. Your first night as a doctor. Yes. I suppose it'll always be like this, man. <laughs> Doctor. Do you feel different? 
Yes, I do rather. I've suddenly realized a lot of things. I... A lot. Joy, I... Yes, I'm... Dr. Sparrow! Oh. Will you wait for me? Yes, I'll wait. Thanks. 